Okay, so after the previous great talk where we learned how easy and fun it is pandas, this time we'll uh, listen from Mark Garcia, who is the maintainer of pandas, what is broken with it and how we break it even more. <laughs> Thank you. Can you hear me? Is the mic okay? Okay. Yeah, thanks, uh, thanks a lot for, for attending my talk. Just a disclaimer, I'm losing my voice and my health is not perfect and my tone might, might be a bit, a bit low. If I don't sound very excited, it's not because I'm not excited about being here. I'm very excited. Just <laughs> I'll, keep to, I'll try to keep my tone enough to, to have voice until the end of the talk. So I'll start yeah, talking about breaking pandas and to break pandas what better than a live demo. And it would be an easy one because pandas is expected to break. So if it breaks, it's, it's good. That's usually the main worry about, about demos. So let me start. Let's see if I can oops, make it big enough. OK. Let me start by importing pandas. There is a new feature of pandas that you can import pandas without being asked PD, and it works in the latest version. Okay, this is this is master. Don't try it in in your version. It might not work. Uh, then I'll I'll open some some data. Well, I, I didn't show it long enough, but I've got I'll get some data about the presidents of the United States. And I'll try to answer answer these questions. Okay, who who was the the younger like to to die? The who took office being the oldest person and who was the president for a for a shorter shortest period. So Pandas has really many cool features, including that you can provide anything that it's kind of reasonable in in the file you want to open, even if it's in a in a website that needs to be downloaded, and even if it's if it's compressed, pandas in general takes care of of everything. Okay, trying to make things a bit a bit complex for pandas, but it works well. And to try to answer the first question, okay, who died at a at a younger age, the youngest age, what I will do is just like to take the death, uh, dot death year and get it the minus oops, the things are interesting and the first year and yeah that was that the question or I did it wrong. Yeah, who died at the at the younger age? Okay, and let's answer some more questions like who took office at a, oops, who took office being the oldest? Well, actually, I didn't. Sorry, yeah, I'm going a bit like fast, but I'll do something. President, because I actually quite focused on uh, and yeah, the first question, the answer is Kennedy. I wonder, I wonder that why, why is that? Uh, let's go for the second question: who, who took office? Who took office? Uh, yeah, sorry. Office being the oldest for that, I'll just get like from the took office. I'll get the year, and then I'll subtract the the birth the birth year. Okay, and I have a, an error. Pandas is not really broken here. It's just like JSON doesn't support like a, a date time format, so. Everything that we got from the JSON that looked like a, a date was actually a, a string. So let's just start converting things. If you know anything about pandas, you might know about the, the types. We can see also a, an interesting thing here. Probably you realize 
you, you've got this in many cases if you're a regular pandas user that it's like the the year here, the death year is converted to a float. That's because there is some precedents that, that are still alive. So there are missing values in this in this field. So pandas has something quite nice. Well, you saw that the type is is float. Pandas has something that is like now the day death year. Well, if I try to convert it back to a oops. back to uh, an integer. Oops. Yeah, that is failing. It will tell me that there are missing values or infinite values, or they don't have a representation in, it's not a pandas limitation, it's just like a hardware limitation. There is no representation for integer values. But in the newer versions of pandas, we've got something that, oops, not this, that we actually have a type, integer type that, uh, why is that? Oh, that's not how I expected it to break. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have, yeah, okay, I repeated here. Yeah, that's actually a little bit weird, yeah, sorry. No, that is still, Oh, death. Because you're at your time, so I was curious. Ah, uh, sorry, yeah, 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 sorry. Sorry about that. Yeah, let me just get the date again then. It should be easier, right, let's reassign the, the index. Yeah, sorry about that, yeah. So yeah, and, and now we, right here. Now this this actually got converted to an integer if I I got the types is a is a different you see the capital the capital I or the, the lowercase I for the original type the capital for the for the one that support missing values. Okay and then we the original problem actually was I'll, I'm going a bit slow but I'll try to speed up a bit like the, the two coffees, that needs to be a, a date time, that, that was actually our, our original problem. And the same for the left office. Okay, this is probably looking, looking better. This look will look the same. We cannot tell if it's a if it's a string or not. And this one that was broken now it's returning me the the year. And now I can check like who was the who was the the oldest one. It was Mr. Trump. So now we can do something else. Well, I'll just do. So I shouldn't do that because I don't have that much time. But I think it's reasonable if I have if I want to clap the my my types. Reasonable party is just like a limited set of values. I don't think it's that much required to save different strings. I can just like kind of encode them as, as categories and it's a, this is a much much better represent oops what happened? Yeah. That's a much better representation. So now I think I don't have objects anymore, but objects are slow in they are Python objects and they are slow in in pandas. So now what I wanted to know is who 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 was less less time a president. There is something quite nice in in pandas that we can create a like a, an in office a column that it would be a, an interval between two two periods. For that, the syntax is a bit trickier. I'll discuss about this a bit later. Oops. Array. Not from arrays. And then I will say that I want since the president took the office until the president left the office. And this is breaking. In this case, it's for a, oh, well, in this case, it's because I did something. Ah, oh, yeah, sorry. You didn't see that, thanks. 
it was like, I like this thing working that you tell me what's wrong. <laughs> you can come to my office if you want. <laughs> I need this all the time. Uh, what it's telling me, we ha there is a limitation. The way that intervals are represented, they, are, they can have missing values, but just a missing value, not like a part of the interval missing. So, or you have like the, 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 the whole thing, it's, it's missing and, or, or it is not. In this case, we have a problem here that is that one of the presidents actually didn't leave off, oops. Didn't leave, leave office, so there is, a, there is a missing value. Okay, that's actually a problem that we are gonna fix. And actually there are many ways, I think I can let you choose which one. We can make him leave office today. We can also, <laughs> we can also change the value so he never took office or he, we can delete him totally. That's very easy to do in, in Pandas, we can do, well, we can, we can probably, yeah. I, yeah, let's say that df.log, uh, the president in question is Donald J. Trump, and I'm gonna say that, yeah, let me. And yeah, that he left office today, that's, that's quite cool, so hope you're happy because our interval array will work, not for any other reason. Okay, if, <laughs> if, you were, if you would prefer, actually, we could even go to the past and say like, okay, he actually never took office, let's say. So yeah, in any case, the, we can create our interval. created our interval and now we have this column that is a, an interval and from it we can just get like the in office and say array dot length that will return us the, the length and actually now if I want to use this I need to convert it to a series that's don't go into many details of this but this actually is not a great syntax that's kind of like the point of this talk, now we have like the exact days that they were in office and we wanted to know the, the shorter, so. so we've got that. Yeah, so this is the, the guy who took office less. And I did actually a mistake at the beginning when I was showing the, who was the, the maximum who took office. Now it's actually Donald Reagan because we, we removed him like from office. But yeah, that's kind of the point. There are a couple of things, actually one of them didn't fail. Some of the problems that I'm showing here because I did something in the order that I was not expected to do. But the first thing is that we converted things to data time very easily with pandas to date time. We converted things to interval with an extremely difficult syntax, I would say. Like that's something kind of very easy, easy to solve, but I think it, it says something that it will come later. We also got that this, column dot length, what we could have just like calling the length, actually we had to create this, like the, the whole thing here, and actually we have to create this, we have to call this, this array that it's the underlying representation of pandas, is something kind of internal just to get the, we want. And we didn't make this fail because I didn't cast the time before getting the first president, but actually the, after converting to the integer with missing values, you cannot compute the, the IDX max. So why is that? Uh, Pandas relies on NumPy, all the internal representations are NumPy based. For the internal tabs of NumPy was like the origin of Pandas and the support is extremely good. But Pandas implements many other things and, and they are growing that are like what we call extension arrays. Okay, so that it's like date times that are aware of the time zone. It's something that NumPy doesn't support. Also time deltas, also periods. The intervals is the one that we saw. The nullable integer is the one that we also saw. We also have the categorical, the sparse. So as, as you saw, there are several things that, that in pandas don't work quite the same or they are not as, as mature when you are using NumPy types and when you are using like extension arrays. That was supposed to be a live demo, but actually I'm already quite late on time, so I'm going to just run it like this. 
Okay, it's still, and that's kind of important because the the Panda 24.2, the latest version, has a small changes in this syntax. Nothing important that it's relevant, but so you know that if you try to run these examples, it needs to be on master. Okay, we can define our custom types. Don't worry that much about the exact syntax, but we just tell a name and we say like that the type of an element in our in our series, in our arrays, it will be an object. In this case, a Python object. What I'm doing is just like representing instead of NumPy, representing things, storing things internally in pandas in a in a Python list. Then I create this class of array that it represents things like how are you going to get the data and how are you going to store, like computing the length, converting it to NumPy, adding two values, like which the type is associated to, nothing really fancy and quite short. And with this, we can do things like creating our, our, our own series. Okay, with our series with our own types. Okay, that's actually kind of straightforward if you don't call many operations. In this case, I implemented the add, so I can just like add one here easily. I didn't implement the subtract, so if I try to subtract something, I, it will fail. But I've got my, my custom type, it's a kind of a very small version, but that. And then, in many cases, if I'm implementing my custom format, actually what I want to do also is do a specific operations, like I saw it in interval. What we do, we don't provide this for inter interval yet, but it should be easy to implement if anyone really cares about this data type, that is like the accessor. So I have my series, and on my series I can, I can define this PYL or whatever I want, that is what I register here. I create a, a class that has a, a property in this case, and then I'm able for a series to access this property that I define, that I define here. Okay, so in this case, I'm, I just have a sim simple function that goes to the, to the Python object and it returns the, the type. So this is how, how things are represented in Python. As I said, like NumPy has a different it's like a simpler somehow and more like close to the core. Everything that is a custom type actually in pandas is implemented it in this way. And as you see, there are different levels of, of maturity and, and it's not, it's kind of recent. This was introduced in recent versions. There is still work on progress, but you see that it's actually making things much easier in, in our site. So after, after this, I said, like the, the idea here on, about breaking pandas is that pandas is huge. Like the API of pandas is huge and what we have is that, is that it's growing even more and, and our code is being affected by that. What it's getting better is that we're implementing like these extensions. So not everything needs to be in pandas. You can implement things separately, like the arrays, arrays and the types that I shown, like for example, the internal is included, the accessors to access this. And there are some examples already of this, like GeoPandas is using that, CyberPandas, if you want to represent IP addresses, you can represent with a specific format and having a specific operations. Fletcher is a, a narrow, an arrow backend for representing, for example, strings in a very efficient way that pandas is not because it's using Python, Python strings. Okay. So I think my point of the talk a bit is just like to explain that we need to keep breaking pandas and making it pandas more extensible and actually like making even the internal things that pandas provide, like making it like in, a, in a, an API. One of the first thing that it's already almost implemented, should be ready for the next version, is plotting backends. I'll discuss them in a, in a second, each of them. Another one that it's under discussion, and we'll see what it happens, is the IO plugins, and then like having direct methods, the same as the accessors, as I saw, like this is a, an accessor, this thing over here. But just being able to, to have like direct methods, like if my data is in terrible, why not like being able to call length directly and, and not that. So plotting backends, there are already several plotting backends. They are using different APIs and they are doing monkey patching and weird things that I think they don't, they shouldn't be using. I think we should be better in pandas to let them interact with us. So for example, if you want to plot in pandas, you would plot like this. In all of you, if you use this, this extension, your, this plugin or module, you, you would use this function. So it's totally independent of pandas. Pandas don't play nicely on letting you plot in whatever you want. What we are adding now is just like having a pandas option that you can specify the, the plotting backend. And in the, in the backend, actually, you just will have the same API for every backend. You will be able to plot in bokeh, you will be able to plot in, in Alter or whatever it is. And third party developers would be able to provide like modules that, that you can plot in, in anything. If you want to plot in ASCII, why not just do it 
So we'll have one API to roll them all. I think that's a good thing. I mean, the standards, the packages would also be more consistent among them. It would be easier for, for developers to get started. We'll have better documentation for the API. Everything would be more uniform. I think that's a really good thing. In terms of IO plugins, okay, Pandas is supporting all these, all these input and output things, is able to read from CSV, I'm sure you know, Re JSON, you just saw it in the example, is able to read and from HTML, from the clipboard, from Excel, Parquet is quite an, a, a great format to use, like we also had like Pickle somewhere in here, and also some like like commercial software, Stata Sans, Google BigQuery and that. So lots of things in here, and also this, if if you are any, have any that it's missing, this is other formats. This is not proper I.O., it's like not it might saving to this for accessing I.O., but this is like different representations like in, in memory representation like Python digs, LaTeX, or strings, or, or whatever. But there are some that, many that are missing. It's like, for example, it's able to export in and import in Excel, but it's not like the formats, the, the open source, the open standards formats, like ODS for LibreOffice, XML, I assume Java people would be happy if we are able to export things in XML, like data frames, and maybe generate an image, maybe a PDF, it was someone who developed a library and was, was asking us if we wanted to include it, Markdown, we got an issue for that, and I'm quite sure in, with time you will, you will get more formats in here. So what I personally think it's a bit wrong is that the moment we're making a decision, we're taking like the, the responsibility of saying what is in pandas and what is not, and what is not in pandas is not supported, and it's kind of like a sneaky library that we don't care about. Okay, what I think we should probably do is like make every one of these IO modules, make them, make them like a a uh, plugin, even if the, we distribute them with pandas and for the user there is literally no difference, we should be creating an API where we define that, that you are able to, to access pandas objects for, for importing and exporting data in a, in a certain way, implement all, all, all our libraries in a similar way as we're doing with extension arrays, having that, and then that third party developers can develop them and that you are able to use them in the same way as you will use that. I think that would make the code much clearer. It would create like a, a much better structure of code where we have like several modules that they all look the same. We'll empower the other developers to say, okay, you're welcome to create your formats. It doesn't matter. We don't know about all the formats in the world, but you would do because you need it. So you can create it and it would be like a, a really su well supported like or or integrated with, with pandas, the, the API would be consistent, no matter if it's a third party module or not. There won't be big differences before, between a, a core and a third party, and for the user it would be as easy as conda install your plugin and an import plugin as PL, just to make sure that people in the scientific Python world is happy, having a short alias for, for that. And also probably like delegating some of this work. I personally believe that Google, the GBQ, like the Google BigQuery, actually is charging users to, for every, for the data, for the bandwidth that they have with their APIs. So it literally means that every time that someone is calling pandas.read GB, GBQ, uh, Google is getting money out of it. And we're maintaining this library in our free time, which I think it sounds a bit wrong to me. So I would personally take this out of the, of the, of pandas and having it a third party module and let Google take care of that. I'm sure they, they will be happy to do that. And finally, going to the direct methods, that's a bit more the controversial because it's a bit going a bit far even in, in what I think we should be doing. That is like, we saw this before, that is like we can have something like, like our column dot interval dot dot lengths, like having the, the accessors already, or having this weird syntax, or we can even go and say, actually I use intervals a lot, so why I need to be calling interval all the time? I'm not calling for numerical operations, I'm not calling them all the time, so I can just like inject directly some methods into, into data frame on series. Interesting fact, series had at the moment 237 public attributes and methods. Really? Okay, <laughs> well, looks like I'm out of time. Let's just give me one minute and <laughs> finish that. I actually got different timing here. Anyway, uh, but yeah, it's like full of things in the first order category for, for, 
for the numerical values, but not even one for intervals. I think we should be we should be injecting that because if you are using intervals or other structures that are not NumPy based, basically you are a second class citizen. You cannot use direct methods like like that. Please forgive us for that. And yeah. I think I'm going to conclude here. I just got a couple of slides more, but yeah, looks like I got, I thought I got 30 minutes and I got 25. Okay. Well, anyway, thank you. Thank you very much.